let's move to the last topic the third topic that is transversal electromagnetic cell tem cell what is tem cell okay this will be looking like this it's just two horns you just connect uh, the two horns uh, mouth is being connected means how it will be looking like that's how it will be looking like and inside the hollow space you can keep your equipment which you want to test okay one from one end one end you can terminate one end you can just terminate and other end you can have the load okay the, the load may be the terminating load the other end you can excite okay excite. so pass the so with, within that hollow space waveguide medium we are transfer we are passing the e field and e, e we are passing the E wave and the M wave and checking how the equipment is behaving inside when you keep it. That's what it is. And uh, uh, more detail we'll see and its variations, all these things we'll be seeing it in this. So using a TM cell is a common approach and advantages is less expensive. It's just taken as an alternative to open area test, but still it is uh, it has got some drawbacks also as well. Let us see what is the drawbacks we have. Okay, before that, we'll see advantages. What are the advantages we have? It is less expensive and broadband without different antennas. There is no need of any antennas. This waveguide medium itself is enough. The transversal electromagnetic cell is enough. That's a, a beauty of it. And then the next comes uh, uh, the limitations. What is the limitation? Size is the limitation. Size of what? Size of the uh, TEM cell as well as the size of the equipment which you want to test. Okay, the size of the TEM cell is limited by the upper frequency up to, uh, up to which it can be used. Possible cell size uh, will be smaller for higher frequencies that we know lambda and uh, our uh, frequencies are inversely proportional. So if higher frequency if we go, lambda will be smaller. So lambda smaller means your TEM cell size will also will be very smaller. And uh, what will be the maximum size of an equipment which can be kept inside the TEM cell is, uh, if you ask, that will be limited by the requirement that any change in TEM cell characteristics impedance resulting from an uh, equipment placement should be minimized. So what you are, uh, the equipment which you are going to keep inside needs a, a impedance match. So uh, if you, if you uh, what test you are doing it accordingly, the impedance match, 50 ohm impedance we have to make a trade that will be difficult so that depends on that the size is limited um, the maximum size of your te equipment also limited as you all know we have just told about it the tm cell is a rectangular coaxial transmission line nothing but it's a rectangular coaxial transmission line and the rectangular section is tapered at both the end and matched to 50 ohm coaxial transmission line so i can say oh, you like something like this is a rectangular uh, rectangular transmission line here one transmission line and here one transmission line both the side it is tapped you can see both the side it is tapped and then connected to 50 ohm uh, matching network 50 ohm matching network so that's about it and the equipment is placed in a rectangular part of it in the center part you have to keep okay the center conductor and outer conductor facilitate facilitates the uh, propagation of electromagnetic energy from one end to other end in the ETM cell so uh, uh, when you excite one side the wave will travel inside that's about it and the center conductor is held in position by several dielectric supports. We can have a, um, we can have different dielectric supports. We can fill it up. An unacquired dielectric material is used to isolate the uh, equipment from the outer or uh, inner conductor. So the equipment which you keep there should not be. Uh, you can't put it on the floor of the TEM cell. We need some dielectric uh, uh, benches so or supports. So on those dielectric supports only you have, you have to keep the uh, equipment. So that different uh, dielectric uh, supports are used, dielectric materials are used to, to separate the, uh, maybe you can say the outer conductor and the equipment or the uh, center conductor and the equipment, whatever way. Wherever you place, based on that, you will be uh, using your dielectric constraints. The closed outer conductor serves as an uh, uh, effective shield to isolate the electromagnetic environment outside electromagnetic environment should not come in so the closed conductor will serve for that purpose and the characteristic impedance characteristic impedance z naught of a tem cell is uh, depends on the length width and g what is the a and b a and b are nothing but a is the uh, length uh, here this is the a length and uh, in elevation uh, view sectional elevation view with partial cut uh, sectional view when you see this is your A and this is your B, okay? And otherwise, it will go with a plane and this is your uh, this is your A 
and this is your B. Okay, this is your B, B R, um, or you can call it as L. Okay, and uh, the center part, this one, this center part we call it as 2 W, and the remaining the volt, this where you place your, uh, these are your uh, dielectric supports for center conductors. Okay, center conductor. These uh, dielectric at the, that height we call it as G. So based on this A, B, G, uh, your, your impedance, characteristics impedance of your PM cell going to be. Okay, and uh, see the, the sometimes it can be like this, and uh, the other side maybe would have been closed like this. Okay, you need not have both end uh, like uh, what I showed other way other time. It can be tapered completely. It may be tapered or it may be completely. Well, one side it's tapered. One side is tapered, no need to have tapering both the side. One side is tapered, the other one is like this. Okay, like this. So this is also available. So this uh, A, B, G, or you can say L, D, H are given here. Uh, in uh, This is the dimension and test volume is given. And uh, here the frequency range up to 2 gigahertz, we can go. It's a uh, ferrite absorbers, absorbers are used inside. And this this way also you can have. So here as the on antenna is used, excite, through this, the field goes, and your equipment is exposed to this field, both electric field and magnetic field. You can see electric field and magnetic field, and uh, then, and the uh, and the equipment has been uh, connected to your spectrum analyzer or network analyzer to measure the uh, E field, EM field, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, any other parameters, scattering parameter, S11, S12, all these things you want to measure, you can measure by using these arrangements. This is also one other another. Another arrangements we have okay so here again you can see the procedure is given this is for uh, susceptibility test radiation susceptibility test RS test how they perform is um, first uh, from the computer you generate an amplifier up to uh, by varying to vary the frequency the field strength the amplifiers are used from the computer you excite the generator generate the wave and amplify according to your need and pass the signal uh, to and then expose this equipment uh, to that uh, signal and then there is observer is used a ferret observer is used those observers are, are connected to field strength measuring equipment and again it has been given to the computer and you want you can just print it so this is how it, it goes for the uh, rs test the steps are given very clearly here first is equipment is positioned centrally in the lower half and the input output connections are given to equipment and measure appropriate uh, measuring apparatus are connected to TEM cell and U, uh, EUT and uh, you measure the uh, voltage which has been exposed to this. Okay, there where it will be equal to E, e will be equal to V R F by D. Okay, then the radiation susceptibility test is now conducted as for the test schedule and specifications. Then you can compare and tell if you are your specifications. Next one is the RE uh, test. RE test also same way we perform. What we do? Uh, the equipment which is there will be emitting. The emitted will be absorbed by the uh, this receivers, measuring receivers given to computer and printed. So very simple test, RE testers. Okay, you see RF energy is uh, somehow uh, generated and radiated by the source, located inside the team cell that is propagated inside the cell and couples to the two ports of the EM cells. By measuring by measuring such energy one can estimate how much has been radiated by the equipment. Inside the cell, we just keep and then do we have a lot of open area tests we would have performed. Okay, so that's about it. With this, we complete this video. I uh, wish you all happy learning and keep learning. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you in the next video.